Oh, recording. We now. had been for the whole time I was under radar ground, heavy ground radar business. We were beset by unidentified flying objects. It turned out, for the most part, to be geese or just airplanes off course or, you know, weird stuff. But this particular night, I'm sitting there and uh, uh, we had telephone communications to all of our, to the adjacent radar sites and to our next hour headquarters. And the next hour headquarters didn't have any radar sets. They just had big plotting boards covered the northwest of the U.S. So all this stuff went Guy, the controller, the guy in charge called me and he was the major or something. And I, he, he knew my name, knew who I was, called me a correspondent. He said, uh, how far up in the cabin is your plotting board, which is a big plastic board we have here? He said, it goes about 200 miles from Canada, north of the U.S. and the Canadian border. He said, well, I'm going to send you a, what he called a cross tail, which was a track that was out of our radar range, but it was coming in. It was coming from the Northwest. He said, I'm gonna start sending it to you. And he said, okay, and so I got a guy on a headset behind the, the big plotting board up there, and he's hooked in by radio to the guy up in Great Falls, which is the next tire that was off my time. And he comes up there, and what they would do is they'd put a little arrow, and then they'd put a number on it, and then you could look over on a the side panel, and it would have that number and that arrow, and then it would tell you how high, how fast, uh, what the origin was, what kind of airplane it was, all that stuff. Now, the significant thing was that when it got to the speed, the guy put over, and he's writing up there backwards, he writes 25,000 miles an hour. And I thought, who is that? <laughs> I, got up, I got on the line to my guy behind the flagway said, you got that right? And he said, yes, sir, I got it correct. I said, okay. So I called the controller. I said, what in the hell are you sending me? He says, we got three radar sites tracking it. That's how fast it's coming. It'll be there in just a few minutes. And this was 53? No, this would be 57. 57? I left there in 58 with the pilot train. Okay. This would be about 57. So that thing is... He said, "It's we can just barely pick it up on the height finder, which would only go to 60,000 feet. He said, we can see just the bottom of the scope. It's got a little blip. We can see the bottom of it. It would make a, the antenna would tip, rock back and forth like this. And it would, uh, the radar return would be about that long, and it would wipe. And whatever was in the center of it was what your altitude was, or whatever that flying object was. But this thing was off the scope, actually. And it comes smoking in there, and it gets to with about 180 miles of us, and we pick it up on radar. Now, we got cameras, a camera, mounted on the scope. And they, they told me, he said, be sure you got the camera set up and operating so that you record everything. Got you. What it would do is uh, the, it's got a cone-shaped device that the camera sits up here, and a cone goes down and covers the scope, and it's perfectly sealed from light. So the only thing it picks up is what the scope shows. So what it would do is it would, the lens shutter would open and it would stay open and the sweep would make a complete circle. Then it would advance the film one frame. So that when you saw the developed film, it gave you a complete picture of what was on that scope for one rotation of the antenna. Well, we tracked that sucker for nearly 400 miles. Came right across the radar so disappeared down toward Kansas City. And I was a working night shift when that was going on. I, you know, nobody said anything. Everybody just goes, nobody knows what it is. Or what it is. We ain't got anything to chase it down, so don't worry about it. I, I get off and I come back to it the next day and they said, hey, you missed all the excitement. I said, what's up? Well, we had a crew show up here at about 10 o'clock this morning. They confiscated all of our film, all of our tape recordings, all of our logs, and everybody got a, got a lecture about keeping their mouth shut and don't talk to anybody about anything. Nothing happened. 
and I thought to myself, now that event, that whatever it was, was tracked for about 5,000 miles mm -hmm. from northern Canada to Kansas City. And I've never read anything about it in any of the big UFO expos, nothing. There's no, no word of anything. It's just never, never happened. I thought that was interesting. I wanted to get with the, somebody that's that's in the end of that mess that's doing the studies on uh, now that they're supposedly releasing all of the classified information about that. Right. I hadn't seen anybody released into that yet. No. <laughs> because they, they, they might try to say it's a meteor, but a meteor will not maintain the same altitude. It might maintain the same direction, but it won't maintain the same altitude. As it goes through the Earth, and the Earth's atmosphere slows it down, which is why it's burning. And why didn't somebody see it? But it didn't It didn't light up the sky. There was no visual. Of course, it was midnight, one or two o'clock in the morning. Interesting stuff. Yep. Mm-hmm.